Fierce pull. Pull. Yeah. Yep. Oh, there he is. You got a good one. You got a good one. Oh my gosh. A good bass on the fly rod for your first time. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are breaking out the uh, expensive fly fishing gear for the first time. We're going to be fishing with our Orvis uh, and TFO combo that we just picked up from Orvis and Tailwaters. We kind of went to a couple different local fly shops here in Dallas. It's also going to be Devin's first time fly fishing with us on the channel. She's going to be throwing the Echo Base Kit that we purchased. This thing goes for, I think it was marked down to like 150 It might be a little higher than that. I'll try and find you guys a link if you want to uh, check this bad boy out. Kind of same with everything. I'll try and link all this gear down below. We may also take out the John boat and fish with some casting gear today, so it might be a little bit of everything. We're going to go ahead and head to a spot that we believe has some clear water, try and uh, toss some flies out there, get Devin the hang of the casting and all that good stuff, hopefully catch her first fish on a fly, as well as maybe link up with something big on one of these baits that we've been throwing lately. We got some new stuff. I shouldn't even really show you all the baits in here. Anyways, Clouster Minnows uh, have been really killing it. So we've got some Clouster Minnows, but we also have some specialty items we may utilize in today's video. Anyways, we could not be more excited to break this thing out just because we've gone through a lot of combos already. The fly fishing journey started for us on like September 20th. I think it's now into October. Yep, the third. And so a couple weeks have gone by. We started off with some budget combos. We picked up from like Academy Shields. You can buy them online. $30, $40 fly combos just to see if we even cared for it. Ended up loving it. So we searched around for some base kits and I wanted to find something under 200 bucks. And we were able to find this guy right here. And this thing is a complete change up from the beginner kits that we used. It's got some solid drag. The reel is nicer quality, larger arbor, so you get better retrieve. It's got metal as far as the reel seat goes and the, the cork feels, everything about it's been great. And now we're stepping things up even further, and I think we're going to unbox the TFO rod for you now. If you saw a previous video where we actually purchased this at Tailwaters, then you've probably seen it. But this is our unboxing straight from the shop. We have not even opened it up. We haven't casted this specific rod. We are very excited. It is a six weight, same with the Echo. Uh, as a matter of fact, here's that $30 one that we got from Academy. This thing... I mean, it puts up a fight, let me tell you what, but there's just absolutely no drag. You can't fight the fish on the reel, which I, I like doing if it's a big one, right? You know, if they take you down to the reel, I want to fight it on the reel. And there's just no way you're going to do it with that one right there. So let's see what we got here. Should be four pieces. TFO Legacy. This is where the money's made right here. So this will be the first like double locking reel seat we've got. See, there's two pieces that spin freely so you can get it extra tight. This guy right here, as well as every other kit we've used, has only got one piece. And so if it were to come loose a little bit, your reel could come undone. Now we've got that extra insurance of two tighteners right there, two fasteners, you could say. Separate sections in the carrying case for each portion of the rod. The eyelets on a, uh, the front eyelet specifically on fly fishing rods, it's, it's kind of funny. It, uh, they, they look cheap in appearance, but actually for performance when it comes to fly fishing, this is the way to go. If you're like looking at your casting gear, you're like, well, wait, this doesn't have that little center ring in it. And it's just a little bit different design. So now this rod does have alignment dots, but they're hard to notice almost. They're like this darker red color. I almost thought it didn't have them there for a second. Now, what I heard is that you don't want to line them up straight. Well, you could, you certainly could, but you could go at like almost a 45 degree angle. And the last thing you're going to do to tighten it is give it a little rotation and lock those pins and line them up. Less chance of your rod coming undone during casting if you do it that way. Nice and snug. I'm going to go ahead and crank this one down pretty good, that first one. That's locked. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring this one right on up to it. And we are going to crank that one down. There we go. Double trouble. Woo! This is cool, man. First time really seeing this thing set up in person. That's sick. So one thing I've been learning from some of the fly guys is they, uh, I've got my leader right here, right? And if you've got your leader or your tippet and you start going up through those eyelets and then you drop it because of the weight of the fly line, it's going to fall all the way through. So what I found is a lot of people kind of pinch their fly line and then they just take the fly line loop all the way up through it. And then it's much easier. And there we go. So once you get through the end, now you just pull a little slack. You've already got your fly line pulled all the way through the eyelets so it makes things much easier. All right, now we're going to tie a bait on and we're going to head to the water. So what I do is I'll bring it in. Uh, sometimes I have next to nothing out. I like just have a little bit of the fly line, just enough to like, just enough to have some out to get going. All right, we practice casting for just a minute. Devin is ready to rock. Ain't got time for this. She's ready to fly fish. All right, I just want to see you catch one. So I'm gonna kind of crank in some line real quick. We'll cast out the Orvis in just a second. Let's see if she can get a, her first fish on this. You're going like this, go like this. Keep it a little higher. And so the loop should just go back and forth. Yep. Haven't seen any bluegill yet. I think that whip, did you hear that whip? Yeah. I think that meant you whipped it. I think that meant when you went back, you went forwards too soon. It meant you didn't let it fully extend on the back before you casted it forwards. Let's see if there's something over here. 
Oh, this looks kind of good. Oh, fish looking at it. Got him. This might be like a microscopic bass. That's the smallest bass I have ever caught. Sorry, bud, you thought this was like your first meal. I don't like that this rod does not have a hook holder. I think that's dumb. I get it. Higher and stuff, maybe they don't want to add one more piece to the construction or whatever it is. Maybe uh, that's how all the high dollar ones are. But regardless, oh, here we go on the back of this reel. All right, we're going to switch things up now, and I think we're going to launch the John boat. Fish. 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 Got one. Closter minnow. Nice. It's got to be a bass. Yep. Oh. Yep. Kind of wanted to catch one on this, uh, reel that was actually decent. So I broke out the cluster minnow, casted right along this grass line, and here we go. This is my first uh, decent fish on this rod and reel. He's running, oh yeah. Oh, nice, nice one. Oh, oh. No. here he comes. Oh. oh, he came off right in the net. Well, that'll do. <laughs> first decent one on the Orvis reel with the uh, TFO Legacy Rod. Thank you, baby, you can go ahead and- Shall I release your fish? Go ahead, bam. Couple more on this, I think it's too addicting. That was one of the first few casts, yeah. You all? Full confidence. Yeah, they do say this fall transition, just small shad baits like a crankbait or something, a little white swim jig, chatterbait, any of that will all do the trick. Oh, there he is. Nice. Let's see if I got this drag set right. I don't know how big this fish is, but I just want to see if this drag is gonna be of any use on this size fish. Yeah, he's taking some. I think he's wrapped around the trolling motor, maybe. It's like I'm going nowhere, but I might be wrong. No, he's he's here. It's got to be small, because I don't think I have this drag very tight. Yeah, he's not that big. We'll just flip him on up here. I'm not going to use the rod, because this rod is... Uh, it's a fly rod. All right, there we go. Thank you. Plouster minnow I'm pulling small. through. Yeah. You're making me jealous. I like this thing. I just don't think my coordination's there yet. Ah, you're getting it. Yeah, Devin literally just, we just practiced the casting and that was it. So first night, fishing off a moving John boat is actually very tough. Your line can get tangled in all kinds of things. I'm just kind of getting used to it myself still. I'm not trying to act like a pro, but uh, it does make it easier that I've gone out a handful of times now with these. So yeah, it gets can, way more fun. Really enjoy it gets, it's so frustrating at first. There's so many things that can go wrong with the fly fishing stuff that, oh yeah, you were getting it, but I'm saying like just for the average person going out and maybe they haven't got a guide or a, someone coaching them and they haven't watched too many videos. It's like, whew, that's a recipe for uh, frustration. All right, let's see what we got. I'm gonna let that sink just a hair. I'm just like right outside the grass edge though. I can see grass, like not even just way over there where y'all can see it on the GoPro, but even a little bit further out. So I'm probably right where I need to be. Just off that grass edge where these little fish would be swimming out from there, from hiding in the bass ambush them. Oh, nice. Bigger than my Klauster minnow fish. <laughs> Swim bait. Just a little bit. She's still in the uh, new Scorpion DC on, uh, is that a muscle rod? It is a go-to. Cool, seven foot, medium heavy, fast action, perfect for literally just about everything in your tackle box if you want one Guggen rod to do it all. That is your guy. If you're in the market for a new rod, by the way, then you can also use code Weston at GuggenSquad.com to save 10% on them. The gold line just has a little bit more of a high quality blank as well as better eyelets, and it's got cork instead of EVA foam. So a few differences there if you're debating on the green and the gold series. Uh, who's gonna catch the next one, Klauser Minnow or Dark Sleeper? Oh, got, oh! You have one? Yeah, <laughs> nice. Another one. Oh, did he come off? Quick release. Dang. Same thing happened to me, except you had the net for me. I didn't have the net for you. <laughs> yeah, that would probably be good. Look at all these fish hitting top water. I'm gonna tie the popper on the fly, for sure. We're seeing a lot of fish hit top water, y'all. I think Devin and I are both gonna tie on popper. She's gonna go with the blooper on a casting setup, and I, I'm gonna rock the uh, little baby fly popper on the fly setup. There we go. Little dude. All right, fish are hitting top water everywhere. It's time to get in the game. Let's not lose our MVP though. Keep him inside the tackle box. Oh, something like took it under. Has something got it? Yeah. Something's got it. Nice. Oh. Oh. There we go. Dang, he choked the popper. Holy smokes. Well, first one of the night on the papa. Sweet. Not as big as we wanted, but we'll get him. See a little fishy? Shoo. Good 
good cast. We'll get another one right here. Oh, yep, got him. Got him. Y'all trying to throw this? This one's got to be a little bit bigger. He's just got, either that or he's just got a little bit more fight. He might not be bigger. Can you just strip him again? Yeah, because he's not that big. If he was big, I would still, it depends. If he's coming right at me, I would still strip it quickly. But then once he's like starting to fight, then I would start cranking in the line and try and get him to the reel. That way I can utilize the drag and here he comes. Get ready. Oh shoot. Just kidding. Sick. Devin's landing all the fish today. <laughs> you want to try it? Come try it. I'm going to try and turn you to get you in a good spot. Good, 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 good. Not tip down by the water. Strip fast to get the slack. Fierce, fierce pull. Pull, yeah, yep, yep. Nice. Oh, there he is, there he is. You oh, got a good one, you got a good one, you got a good one. Oh my gosh, a good bass on the fly rod for oh, your first time. Let him go a little bit, let him go a little bit. Put it under your right fingers. Put the line under your right fingers on the rod and let it slip through your right fingers. Yep, <laughs> yep, crank in the real slack. Crank in the real slack. Yep, be easy. Yep, keep keep tension. Nice, nice, tension. nice. You got it. You got, keep the rod up. Keep the rod up. Keep the rod up. Now just bring him in with the reel. Let him fight it out. Don't hold your hand on the handle. If you hold your hand on the handle, then oh, okay. then it'll snap it if he tries to run. Okay. You got him. That's the biggest one so far, I think. Oh, on the new combo. Of course you would catch the biggest one on the new combo. All right, now don't go any further because your fly line is right there at the yeah. last eyelet. Okay, okay. Just try and bring him over to me. Don't like put your hand on the rod any further up. Yeah. Just let the rod flex. Okay. Yep, nice one. Nice one. That's like two and a half pounds on the popper. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was sick. Pull some line out. Yeah, go ahead and give me a little slack. Nice work, babe. You gotta do that again. Let me unhook him for you. That was cool. That, that was a good me. fish. That was literally a good fish on the popper. <laughs> Holy oh smokes. That's so exciting. My first fish on the fly rod. And a good one too. And a good one too. My <laughs> first one was like tiny. <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. Oh my gosh. All right. Hey, do that again. Do that again. I'm going to get that, actually. Um, hold up. Let me actually, I'm going to do this in slow motion. Ooh, it's a good one. Oh. Yep. Oh, goodness. He's hopping. Don't hold on to the handle. Don't hold on to the handle. He'll snap you off. Yeah, you got to let him run. Yep, there we go. Oh my gosh, that's so sick. This is so much fun. I love the fly. I don't know what the deal is. This is too cool. Oh gosh, what what the heck? Net man. All right, there we go. Golly. He's pounding three quarters to two pounds. Pound and a half to pound and three quarters. <laughs> Reevaluate. Whoever knew my first fly fishing experience would be on the John boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's dope. Do you like it? Is it? Is it like? Yeah, it's a lot to take in. It's a lot to think about. I guess whenever you start fishing with a bait caster, it's the same thing. But it just seems like there's like five more components to this to actually worry about. For the, it's almost time to go. Mosquitoes are coming after me. <laughs> Throw flies right now. <laughs> this is the time. I know. But that was kind of the biggest thing. Is like, oh, I'll hold on to this because of the drag. But no, the drag doesn't work. Obviously, if you're holding the the knob so it's a learning curve oh yeah so that's a good point out. that's a good point yeah if you're holding on to like your your handle your knob on a bait caster they can still take drag but if you're holding on to the handle on a fly fishing setup at least all the ones that we've used and all the ones that i know about and i'm pretty sure all of them in general if you're holding on to the handle they can't take it like that handle has to spin backwards for them to take it out but there is drag there is you can adjust the drag on this one so you just gotta kind of <laughs> What do they say? Let Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> you just got to hope and pray. You can apply a little bit more drag pressure by either palming the bottom of the reel and still letting it go, you know, spin, but like you can apply a little pressure or you could just still leave your right hand on the line a little bit and, and uh, that could assist as well. So here she goes. She's trying to catch fish number three on the popper. Uh, how crazy is it to catch top water fish for your first time ever on a fly? <gasps> Something just hit it. Oh, you got it? <laughs> oh, that's a bass. That's different, that was right? A bass. Yeah, oh. but he came, he came off. Oh. So close. Slow and smooth. Ten and two. Yep. Yep. Slow. Go. Nice. Might have been almost a little too fierce. Yeah. It's, it's tough to tell. It's, you got to be elegant. It's so crazy. Like Christian, when he was casting it, he was so smooth. And yet he would get all the distance. Oh. There was something on it. Yeah. That had to have been a bluegill. That was a little guy. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Fierce. Yep. Bring a big bass in. Get his attention. Oh my gosh. <gasps> They're on it. Oh, he got it. Nope. And, and whenever you, whenever they take an under, strip set it. Go ahead and pull more line, and that's how you'll set it on these guys. Yep, yep. So close to the water. Oh, something on, something on. Yeah. I thought, uh, yep. That, that was a great hook set, by the way, too. Was it? That was good. Nice. Oh my gosh, that's he's on, he's on, he's on, he's on. Don't you have a fish? No. 
What the fudge? Know. He did it. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, he's on. <laughs> oh, he came up. Oh, gosh. That was perfect. Oh, snap. <laughs> okay. What am I doing? You're good. You oh, can just cut this one in. He's not as big, so you can just, and you're already past the, you're right at the fly line, so don't bring any more in. That was perfect. You went even a little further to the left. I think there's more over there. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for the first time taking out the new Orvis TFO combo as well as Devin using the Echo and fly fishing for the first time. It happened to be on the John boat, so that's tough, man. Huge congratulations to her. Yeah. And the biggest one was probably about two and a half pounds. Awesome. Y'all, thank you so much for tuning in. We are about to get out of here. We got to load the John boat up. It is now sunset. It's about to get dark, but we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Peace.